This movie I postponed because of work and the holidays. Now that the holidays are over and I have a bit of time off of work, it's time for me to treat myself to this film. So when I get back, I will share my thoughts. It wasn't that good, was it? Ow. Right here. Faceless here, and I'm not really a big Ben Stiller fan. Some of his works, even his acting, is not that funny. I'll give the man credit, he did do some good works. Like, Something About Mary. Meet the Parents. The Madagascar films. So, is this latest film a winner for me? Well... Let's take a look, shall we? Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. This is the third installment of the franchise, and I have to say, I had some mixed feelings going into this film. First two were good. Hell, I owned the Blu-ray, but this third outing seemed to be a bit lackluster. Here's the basic premise. The film starts with a bit of a backstory of how the tablet was found. You know the artifact that brings everything to life at night? After that short intro, we fast forward to the present with Larry Daly, played by Ben Stiller, and the rest of the museum characters preparing a grand opening for their new exhibit. During the opening event, something goes haywire with the tablet causing our beloved characters to reset back to their original personalities for a few moments. With that, the effect lasts long enough to ruin the event. In response to what had happened, Larry goes and does some research, only to find out the only way to get answers is to visit Akamura's father. But of course his remains is in another museum in London, England. So begins the film's adventure, and the plot pretty much plays it by the numbers. Simple, but really predictable. Like, a couple of characters get separated from the rest of the group. They also meet another character who aids them in finding where they need to go, but ultimately ends up being a plot obstacle. Then once they find where they need to go, they find out how to fix the problem, which leads into more problems. And lastly, at the last second, resolve that problem. And that pretty much sums up the story. Now, there were laughs here and there, but nothing for me to really remember them as being hilarious. Although there was this cameo that gave me a really good laugh, and it kind of made me want to watch his movie instead. But I digress. Another addition is Rebel Wilson, who plays the night guard in the London Museum. She had her funny moments, but it really just gave me a chuckle or two. To be honest, when she's on screen, it felt awkward. Like, um, yeah, we're gonna go over here now. So... See you later? Yeah. It also seems like that if they make a fourth movie, she's most likely to take up the lead role. As far as Ben Stiller's performance as Larry, I'd almost have to say it just seems like he was just there. I mean, the man acted like, all right, I'm here, let's get this over with. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not a fan that I'm being overly critical, but I have seen him do better. <laughs> yeah, way better. To his credit, he did play another character in the film, and quite honestly, he did okay on that one. There's also a subplot that deals with Larry and his son. It basically revolves around the premise of, I want to do my own thing and figure the world out for myself situation. It adds up to an overall lesson of, all good things come to an end, and you have to learn to let it go. There is one redeeming fact of the film that happens at the end. Larry takes his time to say farewell to each of the characters. But when it came to saying goodbye to Teddy Roosevelt, played by the late Robin Williams, it was kind of bittersweet. It's really due to the fact that we lost Robin Williams a few months ago before the film released. Seeing Larry saying his goodbyes to him actually made me a little misty-eyed. And I wasn't alone in this. There were other people sniffling in the theater. In my opinion, it wasn't just Larry saying goodbye to Teddy Roosevelt, but it was like we were all saying goodbye to a wonderful actor who, by all accounts, made us laugh and cry for so many years. So it was understandable for some of us, if not all of us, to feel a little bit heartbroken. And that to me was the biggest payoff of the film. As for the rest of the story, overall, it could have been better. I mean, I don't hate it, they just could have done a little bit more with the characters that we came to love. So for my final recommendation, at best, wait for the video release. At the very least, rent it for one night. Well, this wraps up this review. If it was helpful in any way, please comment below. And if you hadn't done so already, hit the subscribe button for more upcoming reviews. This is Faceless, signing off.